Well, hello everyone and welcome to round tw round 12 of 13 of uh, Rebel Season 10. This is a replay analysis video. Um, we're actually doing it live on stream. Uh, so you'll be interacting with the chat, or I'll be interacting with the chat from time to time. Um, we are playing against Ceramol, uh, who is a UK coach. Very, very good UK coach. Uh, and here's Nurgle. Um, and we are playing as Dark Elves. Uh, we'll have a quick look and see what the inducements packages were. So, Ceramol is the TV underdog, and I've got, I've got a wizard. Um, and we've got nothing. In fact, there's no. F he's got fame as well. Um, look at the two teams. We notice, first of all, Ceramol's got a killer um, Pestigore there. And he's got a Blodge movement bust um, ball carrier. So, unlike last week, where we can leap in uh, and steal the ball. Um, just by rolling a power, stumbles, or a both down, um, we are. It's much more difficult for us to steal the ball this week. Um, next things to, to bear in mind are the beast of Nurgle is going to be a pain in the ding dong to move, and <coughs> uh, he's also got three tackle. So unlike last week, where we only had to play around one tackle, uh, Ceremon has got a, you know, enough tackle to be annoying. Um, so what I'm trying to do here with this setup. Um, is by putting the line of scrimmage off to one side and then taking the rest of my team and slanting it even more than normal so it's a smiley face but really slanted um, I'm looking to attack this space over here um, and pull the Nurgle out of shape a little bit because if we just stand in the middle the Warriors will stand in the middle, will stand in the middle and I'm not quite quick enough to run round him so I've put fast player on the flank there so I can attack into this space if we get a blitz uh, or, a, or a diagonal kick uh, so that's what's going on there. So we'll let him set up. Uh, have a quick look. He's also got 14 players and he's running uh, a dirty player. So um, I think that Saramol, once he gets once he gets into position, might start throwing fouls around here, um, and this could hurt. <laughs> So was an injury. No, we do have two. I do have twelve players for the first time in ages. Why I me? Mean, when did that happen? And that wasn't a removal, which is nice. So lucky there. Uh, tackle. Um, I would have liked to have seen a push into this square here, uh, unless of course he's knocking this guy over. Um, because I would like to see a blitz into this. Uh, I know it's very aggressive, but if you take that Witch Elf out straight away, um, you could do some serious damage. <laughs> Absolutely, Andre. Right, right he's moved the Beast into the Beast and into position. Um, this is all right. He's piled on there so I can't blitz it and it's safe. Uh, this turn is all about for the Nurgle uh, making sure that the ball carry is safe uh, and making a strong centre uh, to, to work around. Uh, Tyranno I'm not sure, sorry. Uh, now, question. What to do here? So, look at this for a second and if you're playing a normal elf team that is fine. You're not. And what I'm looking at here is I see these squares and I just see numbers written on them. And what I see, hang on a second, is I see this. I wonder if I can draw. Uh, so I see uh, this number. And I see that number. And I see that number. Um, because if I choose to come through on this diagonal, that's a 2+, plus, that's a 3+, plus, and that's a 2 dice on the ball there. Because that square is completely vacant. So I wonder if we could go 3-2, blitz from there, um, and I could commit. And there's also, that's not got tackle, that's not got tackle. Um, and that could be a thing. You could leap, yes, because this witch elf that's in this square here 
um, could could try and come round, but she's got to go the long way around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Go for it, go for it. Um, if you want to make it two, two dice, I've got to stand a player in this square. That's a little bit more extravagant, but it's not work. Not bad taking this guy and going this way and just joining up with that arrow. That's absolutely a, a viable play, um, which could be punished. I don't remember what happens, but that, that's something I'd seen straight away. Um, other than that, it's try and unglue the, um, the diving tackle and get the diving tackle up here. So next turn, I can swing him around the back of the cage and apply some diving tackle action. Um, what you do need to do is also try and provide a little bit of exclusion zone around this guy so he doesn't blitz me. So, not sure what we do here. But it's certainly something to... to to note. Okay, so we don't go. For, we don't go for the blitz on the ball carrier. That's showing Saramol a lot of respect. That is nothing wrong with it. Um, it is just definitely showing Saramol quite a lot of respect. Um, I don't really mind having a, a beast, uh, a bludge player glued to the beast of Nurgle. Um, what this is doing is setting up for next turn, and then I've run the mighty blow round and screened it, so we can start trying to hit some of the rotters, the easier stuff to remove. That's all right. No removal. So he didn't get a removal from the piling on Claw Mighty Blow last turn. He didn't get a part removal from the Claw Mighty Blow. He didn't get an armor rate this time. So that's a little bit unlucky. Um, the Beast of Nurgle block there. Not, not, I don't hate it, but I don't love it. I think it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's a 4% failure rate. So it's probably not going to go wrong. But if it does, that leaves the ball carry rather exposed. Um, however, the position here is all right, and I think we're going to see a foul. Um, and I think I'd like to see a foul probably from here. That's probably be a KO. <sighs> okay, so um, looking at position-wise, what have the Nurgle managed to do? Uh, the Nurgle are boxed up in the middle, and what I'm going to try and do is start just seeing if I can peel off players from the Nurgle team. Just one at a time, just casually peeling them off. Um, so instead of a cage of 11 players, it's now a cage of 10, or a cage of 9. Um, and so um, if I can blitz his most dangerous player um, and just sort of stop that being annoying. Oh, and or just injure it. Well done, Chubstep. Um, that really, that really helps. Um, so that's peeled one off. Then he's got this guy over here, so that's down to 9. So it's now actually 9 versus 11. My favour. And uh, 11 elves can start to really dictate what actually happens on the field here. <coughs> and he's going to hit that, so you may as well base here, because that doesn't actually hurt things. Um, and that's alright. Oh. <sighs> Good play, pushing into the beast. And he's, we, we now know that the ball carry is probably coming over here somewhere. Um, and actually, we've peeled off another one because that rotter isn't going anywhere next turn. So there's a rotter at the top of the screen that's pinned. There's a rotter there that isn't going anywhere. Um, we've catch, knocked out one, so that's three down. So he's down to eight. And the effect of that is that all of a sudden, the cage is now looking a little bit bare, isn't it? Um cage is that he's only he's just got a straight X cage instead of an X cage with players around it. So it goes for the foul. Good good probably a good good idea. Doesn't get a removal. He's a lucky Andy. Um and then just chooses to dodge dodge away. Which is fine. Now that's fine because that's just paused and I don't mind leaving a guy up there for a scoring range. Um the only downside is we don't get the hit, but that doesn't matter. 
But look at this all of a sudden. The, the difference is that the Nurgle are a little bit spread out and that this is attackable with only six players. Because I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, and we can even bring one in, eight. And I can overload this. Don't want to do it yet, but I could start to overload this. Um, so I want to start trying to peel off a few more. That looks quite an appealing target. Um, as does this cage corner here, because it's strength four and armor eight. Um, and got tackle. Um, and the problem with elves is, of course, you can disengage straight away. So you just, you stay engaged, you stay engaged, all of a sudden you back off, um, and then you run past them, and that's a problem. If this is an armor break, it's possibly worth following up, as it's not, uh, isn't. Um, because the only other tackle is here, so don't leave it available to be hit. Um, if not... Yeah. And I'm quite content to leave that that there. Or should be quite content. Should have left that there because he was actually not... That rotter isn't doing anything and isn't going to one dice this. So that was a, a misplay on my part there. Double skulls. Quad skulls. Oh my word. Okay. So, quad skulls. Ceremal absolutely unlucky there um, with the quad skulls. Question for you all. And you can't play around quad schools sometimes. Um, um, and and Namanto has just said that we've been quite um, quite fortunate at taking the rules. Yes, uh, did comment on it on turn two. Uh, he's clearly a piling on player. Didn't do anything, didn't do anything, then got casualtyed on um, my third turn. So it's been useless. He's had His casualty dice were rubbish. Um, and Or you could look, my armor dice were great, whichever way around you want to flip that. That is a massive problem. Um, and if you're being hypercritical, you could say that Ceremon could have made some safe moves first. But the chance of rolling a 1 in 1300. 1 in 1300. I don't think you play. I don't think you should have to play around that. So, I don't think it's appropriate to be uh, all hypercritical there. You've got more chance, for example, of that being a double one. So we get the knockdown. We'll follow it up to make sure. <laughs> um, I think he's, he deserved a bit of fortune there. However, the diamond tackle is um, against the ball carrier, so you know that that's one, he wants to do that as a block. And what we're trying to do is prevent any handing off. So we know that he wants to hand it off. So the two players to actually really guard against, not really the ball carrier, but the two um, Pestigors lying down. So this is just being... Right, this is the turn to put an absolute metric ton of pressure on. I can let that rodder get up, because it doesn't matter, it can't get anywhere. And he has a problem. So I chose not to turn sidestep on because I didn't want to take the diamond tackle and step into one of these two squares. Um, I let him choose what he was going to do. Um, and because he didn't roll the pow, um, I was fine with keeping the sidestepper on uh, on the ball. If he had knocked me down, I would have sidestepped into one of these squares. So I think I think we can say I was, I was fortunate with that. Start racking up the words, I was fortunate. Um, again, leave the sidestep on because... Uh, sorry, turn... Let him choose um, because that keeps the diving tackle against the ball. And as we can see now, this has just basically gone horribly wrong for him. He gets a little bit of... I won't say look. It, there we go. He gets, gets the knockdown. But now this really should be... This is one of those turns where... If I turn the skills off... There we go. So we're just on earned skills now um, just to try and decrease the clutter. Um, this really should be us stealing the ball. Really should be us stealing the ball here. Um, and I think the best way of doing that, uh, first of all, is by doing this. So agility 5 into him, pushes my guard into that square there. And at that point, 
The strength 4 can then hit his strength 4 using a block action only into there, saving my blitz. Um, if you don't follow that up, then this guy can then blitz here, putting him back into that square. He can bounce him out, and then we've got uh, assists all over the shop, so the Witch Elf can have another go. So I can have um, 8 dice probably on the ball carrier, if you do it in the right sequence. Um, the other way of trying to do it would be wrong. No, look, um, I don't know. That's the, that's the way I looked at this. So that's how I would solve this problem. Yeah, a, bo a Billy bonus knocked down on the uh, Pestigor. Yeah. Don't follow up just in case this block goes wrong. It doesn't. Falls down. And a random, for no reason whatsoever, injury. Who doesn't regen? Ceremal is officially having rubbish luck. So we can wrestle hit here. So even a both down result on that is fine. So other than a double skulls, it's just, this is this is being a little bit rude now. Um, if we went after that one, a double skulls result was the only thing that went wrong. If we went after this one, um, it, that wasn't. So now it's just a case of pick the ball up. And chub step. Can you pick the ball up? Yes, you can. Can you dodge away? Yes, you can. Therefore, can you throw the ball? Um, and the reason you want to throw the ball is because he has got a wizard. Um, and so you don't want to be holding the ball on your best player or second best player because um, you don't want to get wizarded. dodge off there we go so I'd like to say I played really well there I think we've had um, we've had really really good dice coupled with Ceremal having some abysmal luck yeah uh, there's more MA plus as a minus move yes he does X holes absolutely that's another set of double schools for Ceremal Uh, and all I'm thinking about now really is please don't kill anyone. Uh, that also leveled Chubstep. Did it really? Let's have a look. Yes, it did. That pass did indeed level Chubstep. So we're all going for the foul. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, our next turn is just run players away. Um, and if we can, score on turn 8 now, because there is very little to be gained about scoring early. Because if you remember early in the drive, we did this. We knocked out and, and casualty that. It did regen, but um, we don't want it coming back until the start of the next half. Because this is by far his most dangerous player. So don't let your opponent have the ability to have any teeth. Again, trying to build up, if you remember from the last video, I talked about having a double screen. Um, so this is, I started to put a bit of a double, a, a primary screen in. Um, it's not quite as effective, but that's what we're trying to do effectively is, can you always uh, make the, ah, there we go, she runs off. Can we make a double screen uh, where possible? Because then if you punch through the first layer, you're still saved by the, the, the actual screen around the ball carrier. It's a nice blitz, pushing someone into the Beast of Nurgle. Um, and looking at this, she's on 44 points. Um, 45 points for a uh, throw. Um, and then 46, 47, 48 would take it to a touchdown. And then 48, 49, 50, 51. So she's two, two touchdowns and one throw away from levelling. The eagle eye amongst you would notice that she's holding the ball. We are likely to be able to score with her this drive. So that would put her on the next drive only a touchdown away. And on your elf offence, I would always say you should be able to score on whichever elf you choose. So I should be able to level her this game. Just because turn 7 she throws, turn 8 she scores. Turn whenever next drive she scores again. Uh, Tom Racing says, wouldn't the wizard on the two witch elves not be beneficial? Um, as you're using a double negative there, Tom, um, it wouldn't be good, no. 
See what I did there? Uh, no, it wouldn't be a good idea because, yes, it might be nice to take one or both of them out, but your ball recovery at that point is terrible. So you don't actually stop me scoring. All you do is you just try and nail a witch elf. Again, now we have absolutely got screen one and then screen two um, because I've actually managed to get the shape right this time. And what we then also swapped around is we put the rubbish elves at the front, the decent elves behind, and then the players playing patty cake at the back. Uh, do you only have to make one tentacle roll when moving through a tentacle player's tackle zone? No, it's two tentacle rolls. It's every time you want to move it. Haha, <laughs> Min's uh, thank you. <laughs> um, poor strength 4 elf uh, is getting stu stood on. But as per this game, uh, Semrol's look sucks and um, Douglas has been um, removed. I know. I know what I did. So this is just cancelling out assists and then um, Strength 4 Elf can come and blitz his Strength 4 Elf because he is armor 8 and I've got my blow and the game's going really well so he's probably dead isn't he? Not quite. However, we do score so that puts her on 47 points. So at the end of the half, that half could not, could not have gone any better. Ceremon's look absolutely sucked. doesn't get his knockout back and so we're setting up the start of the next drive with I've taken no damage whatsoever and Saramol is down three players and so actually uh, is down to playing ten so the team with the claw mighty blow piling on player ten the team with random mighty blow player eleven some games are just unfair Donkey Dragon, you could possibly think that I couldn't possibly say no. Um, so, strategy-wise for me here, uh, we're 1-0 up, we're playing against a wizard. Don't sit and loll around on um, on defence, uh, sorry, on offence. Take the ball, score, make it 2-0. Make Saramol have to play the game with a wizard on his offence because all that wizard then does is it probably makes sure he scores rather than turns me over and makes it 1-1. So my strategy here is absolutely got to be go score in two or three turns. Um, some people might tell you you should go and drag it out for as long as possible. Um, I, I personally don't agree with that. No knockdown for Chubstep this time, but if we so I've run this guy over, so this is scoring threat over this side. Um, what we also need is some, some scoring threats over here. Um, remember, we want to score with a Witch Elf. Samuel's probably clocked that. Because um, he knows what I'm like for scoring on the right Elf. Um, so I'm going to suggest that he knows what I'm trying to achieve. Uh, Guard Elf needs to stand in this square. And then the Blitzer needs to stand in that square. That means the Witch Elf is available for a two-turn score if I want it. If he wants to then do something about this, he's got to commit some players over here. He's got to commit some players over there. And he's got to commit some players on the line of scrimmage. Uh-oh. Um, that's unusual from ever. She's normally very good at... Um, um, no, I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it. So she dropped the ball. <clears throat> so notice now we're starting to see that the Nurgle team uh, have to split up. So he's got to go and deal with both sides of the pitch and some people on the line of scrimmage. Um, and that could be a problem. It could be a problem. Oh, congratulations, Killjoy. Has made the playoffs. Well played. Uh, Steeptoid has been uh, knocked out. That killer player has finally done something. 
Uh, it is only turn nine. Um, notice now we've got Disturbing Fragrance and uh, Tentacles on these players. So these players are not going to be particularly helpful. Um, however, if we can get the ball past um, Chubstep Blitzer, uh, what we can do uh, is we can uh, easily go and score now. So this shouldn't be too difficult to deal with. All we need to do, all we need to do really... Uh, is we should get rid of that one so there's no intercept. Um, so what we should do is dodge this guy out. Um, he can provide the assist and then go one, two, three, four, five blitz. Um, and then you can get rid of him. Or in fact, you'd come this way, wouldn't you? You wouldn't go that way. That'd be silly. That'd just be stupid. Um, and so I'd start using these guys. Can I just dodge them away? Um, or does tentacles keep, keep them in play? Uh, but I choose to go the other way. So I want to hit with Mighty Blow, which is a little bit greedy. Um, thinking that, well, he's not going to be able to do anything to me. And it also bases that player. So Ever picks the ball up. And just needs to throw it here. So it's only 3 plus. No, sorry, 2 plus, 2 plus. It's fine. Unless, of course, you get intercepted. So, he's intercepted. Um, that is a problem. And nothing more than I deserve. Nothing more than I deserve. Let's just pause it now for, for the rest of this. Um, I know what he does do, so I'm not going to comment on that too much. Um, but the best thing he, he probably should do is... One, two, three, four... So double go for it here, um, stand this guy up, and then blitz here for two dice, walk forward, hand the ball off, and score. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, double go for it. If you drop it, um, then you can always just uh, take seven squares and step over here, and you're basically out of range of my witch elf. Um, but that's what I would, that's what I would do. Um, what he does do, something slightly different. I was, Dr. Nick. Absolutely. So he stands this guy up. Um, not sure really what that changes, but he chooses to go that way and gets both down uh, into a skull. So we get a reprieve. That's all right, isn't it? Everyone likes getting a reprieve. You get a push. We don't want to go near the sidelines because I don't want the ball to go off the field. And Jelly Legs, who stole the ball off Ever, um, is killed by Ever. So um, that's the end of that one. And this is, can we dodge away from tentacles? Uh, no. And... I'm trying to forgo the hit here because I know I can get two dice on this one. Um, and this is me just run off and say, well, you've only got a Nurgle Warrior. What are you going to do? Dodge out on a four? I don't think so. Um, unfortunately, don't count the squares. If you've just seen what I've clicked there, um, you'll notice that he's in range. Um, that is poor play. But that Beast of Nurgle's just held up all three elves. Um, Stallions McPanther, thanks for the follow. Welcome to YouTube. So three plus, two plus, two plus for two dice with tackle on the ball. Um, or four plus with a reroll for two dice on the ball. Um, I think I prefer the f just the straight up Nurgle Warrior dodge. Four plus, better odds. 75%. Oh, there's a 3 plus. In fact, it's 3 plus, 3 plus, 2 plus, 2 plus. She's not scoring. Not scoring at all. She's not even on the field. Um, and that's all my own fault, really, um, from playing a little bit too cocky and loose uh, in a few turns ago. 
That's got to be... You've got to put that down to your, your own bad play. Nothing more than I didn't deserve. There was no two dice available on the ball carrier. Uh, the guy that just did the blitz there could have dodged out here and dodged out here. Oh, he's strength four, isn't he? Never mind. Never mind. Um, you could do both. In that case, that was absolutely the right blitz, wasn't it? That was dangeroso. Uh, and this, I thought at the time this was a really clever play. This is stupid. So, notice the ball carry is tagged by tackle. So, I'm like, oh, it's alright. I just do each dice roll at a time. If I don't use my re-roll, it's fine. But at any point, if that re-roll is used, um, then there, I haven't got a re-roll for the tackle. And the way that this game was going, Ceremal is absolutely due some luck. So you'd expect a one on a re yeah, one re-roll fine into dodge away. Oh dear. So that is that is not good play from me. That is again very greedy. Um, I shouldn't be doing this. I should just be scoring with chop step. I do choose not to throw it finally, um, but that makes it two zero, and two zero probably puts the game result. Um, into uh, into my hands as being safe. Um, of course, all the cows come back because it's uh, it's this game and everything's gone well my way. Makes up for that vampire game, the first game of the season. Oh my word, that was horrible. I'm surprised they didn't go for the Vanity Pass. I think the Vanity Pass would have just been a bridge too far, even for me. So, right, if you're Ceremal here, what you need to do is you need to score, the, score in two turns, uh, and then you can try and go for 2-2. Two, two. So, weather change is fine. Doesn't change anything. Um, what you need to do is knock down here, knock down here. Um, blitz this person here. Uh, fucking banners in the way. Um, and then Wedge the Beast of Nurgle. Oh my word. That's another double skull. So that's, uh, he's on four double skulls now. Uh, and Wedge the Beast of Nurgle into this, into this player here. Robo's got knocked out again. How many times have you been knocked out? Bring this um, strength four forwards. Why they're not together? I don't mean emotionally, I'm just curious why they're not standing next to one another. Having used the re-roll. And then this guy needs to stand probably here. There? No, there. No. I like that. So we'll, as soon as he presses enter, and I'll uh, explain why I don't like that. Uh, all right. Okay, so you can do that instead. Fine. Pause. Right. So we haven't moved yet, although you can see I'm about to move my guard elf. Um, he's got two viable scoring threats: the strength four pestigore and the killer pestigore. Um. From a board presence point of view, trying to deal with the strength 4 pestigore is probably the right play because shutting down the strength 3 one is probably a lot easier. From a, oh my god, they're really dangerous point of view, um, you absolutely knock over this one and then just try and mark this out of the game. Um, so I think I'm going to go I think I'm gonna go with uh, guard into there. Uh, another player just comes along and then you blitz and you can actually push this guy out of scoring range at the same time meaning you have only really got to deal with one player. Um, I think that's what we're going to do. Probably the right play on balance, um, but it is going to leave um, Charlie Twinto's uh, a, a way in to score. And you should be using, hopefully using, uh, Foe Up the Witch Elf. But you, 
this this uh, this guy should fall over. For you re-roll that, surely, surely you re-roll that. No, you re-roll that. You got three turns. You got three re-rolls and four turns. That is a re-roll. <coughs> Guard into there. Because there's nothing else you're going to use the re-roll on this turn. Let's just go and tag that out. I, I would have liked to have seen the re-roll for the mighty blow hit. <laughs> Sometimes it just happens where you are. So you can now blitz out... Um, will be able to when he moves the guard out of the way uh, blitz out that'll be fine but unfortunately he rolls the wrong dice at the wrong time so blitz on a five strength five sorry blitz on a five with an assist uh, doesn't get the knockdown um, which has then meant that he's going to struggle to score and is leaving players available to be surfed so pause this for a second how do you deal with this? Um, notice the ball carrier is bludgeoning against the side of the field. That's got guard. So if you bring him in here, uh, that's two dice. You can go one, two, three. Dodge for there for two. That's two dice into one dice. So it is very likely to be against the side of the field. Um, and if you've been... Yeah, it's two dice into one dice. Just that's, That is the play. There is no more to this. Don't roll a one. only thing you might want to do uh, is try and block Chubstep out of the way first so he doesn't get surfed. Um, uh, and I don't want him getting surfed, so we do that. So it's even worth the re-roll, because you're 2-0 up. If you weren't 2-0 up and it was 0-0, probably wouldn't have re-rolled that. Um, we get lucky when we get the... Um, the first thing. Got Juggernaut, so why not use it? Surf the ball carrier just for extra funsies and cause a casualty. Uh, we were, we're doing a replay analysis video. Um, so there's not as much um, interaction with stream, um, but I was going to do it instead of being on my own. Um, luckily for the Nogle, it has gone in a nice ish square for him. Tentacles holding on to my player. And I don't fancy leaving her next to that to get hit, so just move her away. And we know that we want to score with her, so let's run her over here. And this probably is going to look to be 3-0, I would imagine. At this stage on the board, this is looking very 3-0. He's struggling to get... He can't get away from Eva. Um, she should be able to get her hands on the ball next turn. Um, he's out of re-rolls. He's got no ball carrier. This is... Um, this is a problem. He's picked it up. And he has put the ball on his killer. Not. Because the ball's on the floor. So this should be fairly straightforward to deal with. Um, take the strength 4 elf. Blitz this guy. Um, take chub step. Um, actually, I would have done this in a different order to what I've just done there. So let's remember she's in the circle. Blitz. Don't do it. Don't follow up. Just stand there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's a two plus. That's a two plus. Have off with it. Done. Um, so this is out of sequence. Whatever I choose to do now is definitely out of sequence. Um, so this is one of the few times we're putting a player in the scoring position. Uh, straight away was the wrong thing to do. If you're going to put someone in scoring range, go and put that witch elf in scoring range. Yeah, it was the wrong thing to do. Um, should have put that one in scoring range and then thrown up to that one. Uh, 
Um, and you're trying to throw the ball to this one, I'm guessing. Yeah, this is no good. <laughs> Second intercept of the game. Um, should have thrown it over there. If you're going to do that, you may as well throw it over there because, just pause this for a second, that is probably still only a 3 plus. It might be a 4 plus. Um, and an inaccurate pass at this point is fine because it just bounces from around here. So that was a really bad shit, bad decision on my part um, because it gave an intercept when I didn't need to give one. Um, and I should have just done something different. So again, I'd say this is my own fault. Um, yeah. Use your crayons, Andy. No, not allowed to. So, yeah, that was my own, my own fault. So he's he should be looking to score here now. You can run it in and score. Um, crowd surf, my player. Unbelievable, Jeff. And uh, Steepzoid gets injured for my own stupidity. But he's fine. Ish. Yeah, he's fine. And then Ceremon scores. So it's kind of as we were from last game, uh, where the opponent is only one touchdown behind now and um, has uh, a wizard in hand. So he could potentially draw the game where we don't need to have given him the ability to, uh, to, um, to do that. Over Warrior comes back. So a Blitz result is bad, a Riot result is bad. Um, he's still got his Wizard in hand. This could be bad. And so notice this time he hasn't put all his players on the line of scrimmage. I can't um, tag them all out. So this is the right thing to be doing. Um, this is a problem. <clears throat> I also can't be scoring. So the best thing to do here for us is take a couple of players and put them back. And then try and screen these. So if a blitz result comes up, you can't do anything too crazy. Um, and have all my players spaced out so it's difficult for him to deal with. There we go. I'm taking the blocks that are available at the same time, trying to just spread the field out uh, and make it so that uh, if something comes up that I don't like, um, we're not completely ruined by it. Turns out it was perfect defence, so the result is 2-1. Um, so, chat, I didn't really stop and ask you guys too many, uh, too many opinions in this game. Um, I think we can all agree that the first half was an absolute dice fest. Uh, Samuel had really, really bad dice in the first half. Um, what do you all think about maybe the second half? Yeah. Right thing to do here is just bring the players back. Um, is there a player that I want to throw the ball with? Uh, Sergeant Oddity could do with a pass, so probably walk it back, hand it off to him and throw the ball with Sarge. We were. That's what I learned. Um, yeah. I think there are things that I could do better, for sure. Absolutely. Make the throw first, because the throw is important, because it makes a star player point, for sure. And then it should just be a case of run away. Oh, Flick Skoda. It feels like only yesterday that you subscribed again. Um, recently. Thank you very much. Tentacles doing a thing. Do you know what we could have done there? We could have blitzed actually uh, to run away, but never mind. <coughs> it flicked soda, isn't it? 
Sorry. It's not. There's no. There's no Skoda in it. No small car. Yes, soda. Excellent. So there we have it. Um, I think I'm relatively fortunate again with this game. In fact, relatively fortunate. Fortunate again with this game. Um, same old. The game was done in the first half, um, and actually it led me to play a little bit more care more carelessly than I should have done uh, in the second half. So that's on me. Um, other than that, I'm, I'm pleased with the result. I'm delighted that no one died. And we've, got, we've now played two kill teams, uh, one after the other, uh, and nothing went wrong. So, it's interesting. Uh, Stats-wise, we did 7 on breaks, we did 15. How does that stuck against black block dice? 15 blocks uh, on breaks of 40, makes sense. Um, 7 from 28, it's about right. Um, but that is the statistic of the game, I think. That. Uh, injuries inflicted versus injuries inflicted. Um, that really is higher than normal and that's probably lower than normal um, we hit four passes he hit none but he did get two interceptions um, even though one of them did die uh, so star player point wise again we had a second week in a row with some uh, some good star player points so it's alright that it's alright uh, you're into the real playoffs excellent huh. excellent um that remains for me to say thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, please definitely leave a like because uh, they mean quite a lot. Um, and if you want to see more, then hit the subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time. So there we go. Um, that looks a bit weird. You know, that's weird doing that on stream. Um, but anyway, thank you very much. Um, now I'm not going to do it.